Ladies and gentlemen, your host for this evening, Mr. Nate Blanchard! What's up? Oh my god, how are you guys doing tonight? Where are my straight guys? Straight guys? Hey! I'm just checking to see who I can hit on after the show. Let me see some hands. Hand. Really? Fuck. Okay, anyway, anyway. I had this thing, um, straight women always come up to me and because, like, let's admit it, my, my wrist is pretty lit. I'm gay. Like, you can tell. I listen to Madonna, I love that bitch, blah, 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 blah. I'm gay. And uh, women suddenly mistake that, that I want to be their shopping buddy. <laughs> or that I want to go partying with them. No. Do you know what it's like for me to go shopping with a woman? It's like me crouched in a dressing room with them while they're getting naked right in front of me and I have to look at their uneven tits. I'm like, ugh. Oh. <laughs> and the entire time, like, this is making me look fat. This is making me look fat. This is I'm like, yes. Uh, no! No, it does not. The ladies are not laughing right now. I'm so sorry to betray you, ladies. I will make it up to you, I promise. I absolutely promise. Um, yeah. I don't want to go partying with you. But, um, oh, ladies, ladies, show of hands. Come on. Hi! Hi, I'm a feminist. God damn it. I study feminist art history. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's pretty gay, right? <laughs> anyways, anyways, uh, ladies, do you guys have a vibrator? Vibrators? Dildos? Yes. Come on, this is a night of truth. It's a night of truth. I hear some yeses in the background. Okay, um, if you ever hear a woman comic or just a woman in general say, the best sex I've ever had is with is with the vibrator. It's true. <laughs> yeah, sorry boys, sorry. Um, my boyfriend travels a lot, so he's gone a lot, so I have to fucking improvise, because I need it. Um, that's for the straight guys, you understand, right? I'm trying to speak straight as, with a, such a gay subject as possible. So, I have a promise, I promise to translate to you. So I have this vibrator, and it has really crazy settings. Like, <laughs> like you turn it on one, and it's like, and then you set it on two, and it's like, and then you set it on three, and it's like dubstep for your asshole. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, oh, yes, 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 yes. Like, there's some straight guy dancing in my room, like... <laughs> it's like that kind of depth step. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> After buying this vibrator, every dick, every dick I've ever seen, it's just like, mm. <laughs> No, you can't do that. Can't do that. Anyways, um, this also is one for the ladies. Ladies, are you in? <laughs> Don't be shy now. <laughs> yes, in the background, thank you, thank you. Okay. So, um, I was dating this guy for a while, right? You know, like, 20 minutes at Starbucks. <laughs> I'm gay, I can get away with those things, God damn it. God damn it, and you straight people with your weird, normal sex, um, So, I was dating this guy, and I was really excited, and I wanted to take him home with me, and I took him home, I put on some candles, I put on gold frap, you guys know what I'm talking about, obviously. Felt Mountain, right? Right? Good shit. So um, I'm working down his pants, and I work down his underwear. And um, you guys, he had a Frankencock. <laughs> like his dick looked like Chunk from the Goonies. <laughs> hey, you guys! <laughs> like it looked like Nosferatu of penises. <laughs> it was disgusting. It was like curving to the side and drooling. <laughs> like Gonzo's nose. 
Gonzo's knows. These chicks in the corner are like, I know what you're talking about, girl. Oh, girl. Um, it was disgusting. I did not know what to do. I felt like a trout being pulled towards the light, like, ah! So, yeah, that bad. So I'm panicking. I just want him out of my apartment. And so I'm like, don't know whether to give him a hand job or an exorcism. I'm like, the power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. And then like, finally he came. Angela Merkel. I'm covered. <laughs> Fucking covered. The candles have gone out. <laughs> Fucking Goldfrapp is like, I'm out. <laughs> no. Alison Goldfrapp has left. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm, I'm sitting there, and I don't know why, but I ask him, so how was it? And he was like, <laughs> Yeah. So that was sex with Vladimir Putin. And are you guys ready for your next comedy act? We have a guest, Germany. We have a guest from our friendly neighbor to the north, from Denmark, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Hello. Hello, come in. Hey, you doing good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Valdemar, I'm Danish. Uh, I don't have any jokes about that, so um, let's move on. Uh, I'm 29 years old and I found out that I'm getting too old to die young. <laughs> yeah. So if I died tonight, that would just be it. Yeah. How, how old are you here? How old are you? 25. Okay, what's your name? Olivia. Olivia. Okay, Olivia. Uh, if you die tonight, I'm not saying you're gonna die tonight, <laughs> unless we all decide on it. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just... I'm, I'm just saying that I, I'm open for suggestions. You know? and, of course, I realize now that a lot of you are Germans, so suggesting that a bunch of you decide to kill somebody, this is a bit, I know. Uh, <laughs> but that would be sad if, they, if everybody else decided to kill you, right? <laughs> this guy is not, doesn't think so a lot. <laughs> no, I'm ready for it. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's have fun. Uh, Comet, comet. Uh, we're not gonna do it. We're, maybe we're gonna do it, but I don't. I, it wasn't my idea to begin with. We don't. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, but if I died, that would just be it. Uh, and I, I think maybe people would meet up tomorrow, and they would say like, "You heard about Valdemar? He died." R really? Yeah, he just fucking died, man. Okay. Uh, isn't that a bit early? It's a bit young, right? Nah. <laughs> no, you read about it in the newspaper in a week. Valdemar was torn away from us at a very fitting age. It was fine, it was fine. <laughs> I learned, a friend of mine told me that when men uh, reach 30, it's the point in their life when they peak sexually. As it is obvious to everybody here. Uh, uh, because that's a point in our lives when we're not as dumb as we used to be and we're not as fat as we're gonna be. <laughs> it's like an optimal situation, everything getting coming together. It doesn't get any better. And I tell my girlfriend every night, I say, it might be bad now. It'll be worse tomorrow. Uh, I try to stay young, I try to stay young, I go on Facebook and I uh, comment on people that I don't know. Uh, 
So if uh, Josephine, 14 years old, she writes, I love my pony. <laughs> then I'm sitting at home thinking, uh, I better be a part of this. <sighs> and what I do is try, I try, usually I try to start like a, a philosophical uh, debate on her uh, page. So I go in and I comment and she comments back and I comment and she comments back and I comment and she comments back and then I erase all my comments. <laughs> It just looks, looks like she's really fucked. <laughs> I love my pony. Who are you? What? Oh, Carpe what? <laughs> Carpe diem. That's... Oh. Yeah, you could use that if you want to. Um, I uh, just want to uh, tell you a story. I ran over a Martin in, uh, in my car the other day. Uh, if anybody not know what a Martin is? Uh, a marder? Ein Marder, yeah, yeah, I researched, uh, <laughs> screw you, uh, I got it, um, a, a Martin, I ran over a Martin, and, and I think the problem for me was that I, I didn't know what to do, you know, a real man would have gotten out of the car, checked if, if it was, like, uh, dying, and then finished it off with his teeth, or something like that, but I stayed in my car, and looked in the rear view mirror, and I thought, I have to run this over again, <laughs> And I did twice, <laughs> back and forth. Uh, it was terrible, it was really terrible, because I, as I really didn't know if it was dying. <laughs> you know, I might, might have just grazed its knee, like. He might have been walking along, like a Martin, like minding his own bis thing, like, I don't know how they walk. <laughs> Play along, come on. Uh, but he might have been walking, and I just, whoop, uh, grazed his knee and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Maybe he was perfectly all right. He might even have had the best day of his life. Like just escaping like a Martin prison. Like a Shawshank Redemption but, uh, with Martins. Like clawing his way out of the jail, hiding it behind a big poster of a really hot Martin. With, with big Martin breasts. And then this ginger psychopath just runs him over in a Volkswagen. <laughs> Maybe he was just out, you know, he was just about to cross the road and then polish a boat on a beach somewhere and then I fucked it up. <laughs> and I know I make some assumption about, yeah, maybe he was in a jail or maybe he was in doing a hen house or something like that. <laughs> I know those, those are assumptions. Maybe I don't really don't know anything what he's doing. He might have been doing anything like being a Martin physician. <laughs> like a, a Dr. Martin. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I think it's bad that I went from being like a, a merciful uh, ender of fairy life until, and, and moving into the area where it was now a cold-blooded murderer. And the really bad thing is that I don't even know if it was a Martin. <laughs> it, could, it could have been like a furry goblin. But I don't think they ride tricycles. <laughs> a sheep can recognize 51 other sheep so if you have 52 sheep, don't get another one. <laughs> because they won't recognize the last one. <laughs> Just saying. And it can create some tension in the fold, you know, with the new sheep and the old sheep. Oh, hey man, who's, who's that guy? He's, he's eating our hay. What, what, what do you mean, that guy? Yeah, he's eating our hay, man. But it's, it's John. <laughs> he's been here for like two months. John? Ah, John, yeah, John. Who the fuck are you?
I don't know how they found out. I think they made some kind of cheap lineup. <laughs> That's my theory. Uh, where they put 52 sheep in a row and then they brought in a test sheep, <laughs> blindfolded, and he went, bah, bah, bah. I, this is a bit long, this part. Uh, <laughs> Bah, bah. 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 I um I have a girlfriend and. Uh, <laughs> It's a, bit, it's a bit against all odds, I think. Uh, I, ba I, basically, I basically look like a guy who grew a beard, forgot about it, and grew another one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. Uh, but we are very happy, we're very much in love. But uh, relationship can really create hatred between people. <laughs> when you're sitting at home on a Friday night and it's raining outside, and you just look at each other and think, Why are you always breathing? <laughs> it's very sweet. She's very sweet. I love her. Um, but you know, you've been with your girlfriend for a very long time and you're no longer able to answer any of her questions. Like, is it okay if I take a shit while you brush your teeth? <laughs> well... Is one of your testicles getting smaller? Is that sweat from your ass or did you pee the bed? <laughs> I think it's a bit of both, I don't know. <laughs> before, bef uh, I, before I leave you, before I leave you, uh, I lived in South Africa for six months. Uh, not, not before I leave you, but now, it's not like I'm gonna, you know, before I leave you, I'm gonna live in South Africa for six months. That's gonna be a pretty long show. Uh, and a boring show, I think, maybe. Maybe it could be interesting, me just leaving now, you staying here for six months, and then me coming back to f finish up this joke. But again, no. I lived in South Africa, and a man tried to sell me an ice cream uh, in the street. He came up to me and he said, oh, you look like you like ice cream. <laughs> and he might be right. Uh, I looked at him and I said, you look like you like poverty, and I stole his ice cream. <laughs> My name is Valdemar, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> give, give it up for your host, thank you. Give it up for Valdemar. Yes, yes. I just have one thing to say, thank God he has a girlfriend. Um, and thank God I have a boyfriend. Um, very funny story. So we were in London, right? And he was introducing me to all of his friends. It's another one of those embarrassing things. He's not here, so I can tell you all about it. Shh. Um, so we're in London. He's introducing me to all of his friends. And he turns to me and he says, Now, Nate, don't do anything embarrassing or American. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Did you expect me to walk in the room and be like, well, howdy, partner. <laughs> yeah, shit, I reckon, Romney. <laughs> yeah, he grounds me, he grounds me. Are you guys ready for your next comedian? <laughs> That's really good to hear. Um, also, a fellow American who is not voting for Romney, right? <laughs> good, he's voting for Obama. Yes. Sehr gut. Sehr gut. Everybody, please welcome to the stage a good friend of mine, Sean Hunter Williams. Hi, guys. Hey. It's really great to be here. Um, really glad you guys all came out. Okay, just really happy to be here. 
Um, yeah, so uh, I'm from I'm from Vermont, uh, Vermont. Sorry, <laughs> Vermont. I'm from Vermont, um, which is a, a very small state in uh, the northeast of America. It's uh, New England. Um, it's a nice place to grow up, but it's really it's really um, homogenous there, uh, homogenous culture. And when I say homogenous, I mean uh, white. It's a very white <laughs> state, um, but it's fucking cold, so that rules out like a lot of ethnic minorities right away. Um, <laughs> You know, you're not gonna see like a, like a, I don't know, like like Mexicans on the ski scope, like Psh, waiting all fucking year for powder, man. It's the shit, yo. Um, no, it's cold and and, and they leave. Um, there are well, there's some uh, Mexicans in Vermont. They come up and work uh, on the farms in the summertime, and then they they leave because uh, it gets fucking cold after that. Um, and uh, I could just kind of picture that that kind of conversation with um, you know at, at the end of the season with the farmer. There's Farmer John and says, hey, <clears throat> Sanchez, go. Ralphie, you go. You guys are great workers, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for, for coming out and I hope to see you next season too. So uh, where, where, are you, uh, where are you going back to? And he's like, oh, actually, man, we fucking work in like a hotel in Cancun. We, work, we uh, live in Cancun and we work there in the winter time and come here and in the summer, I said, wow, so you, so you live in Cancun? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, that's where I'm from, that's where I live. And so <laughs> Take me with you. <laughs> don't, don't, don't leave me here. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nah, it's all right. Uh, fucking 30 below, though. Can you believe that? 30 below Fahrenheit. Uh, pretty cold. So we don't have to talk about that anymore. Um, but uh, then I moved from Vermont down to Philadelphia. Anyone ever been to Philadelphia? Yeah. 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 Fucking shit -ay. Woo! shit -ay, shit -ay. Um, It's actually pronounced Fluffia, uh, if you're from there. Um, and uh, it's, it's all right. I, I first moved there when I was, when I was 18, you know, kind of coming from, from Vermont, kind of like a sheltered kind of... Uh, white bread kind of state, and then I come down to Philly, and uh, um, first thing I did was actually look for a gym. I looked for like a gym membership, um, and I found this little ad in the paper that was like three months for a gym. And I said, all right, check it out. I went on a Sunday, there was no one there. There was like no one at the gym. And I said, all right, cool, I'll check out the, the facilities, see what they got, you know, and it's had, uh, they had a machine called the Ass Blaster, which I'd never seen before. It's like, all right, I'll tr try that out maybe. Um, <laughs> in between sets, uh, I don't know. And uh, so I said, okay, I'll take it. And I came back uh, the next day and it was fucking packed. There was tons of people in there. And I was like, Jesus, there's a lot of really buff guys, like a, r a lot of really like, really strong dudes, you know, walking around there. And I was like, oh man, it's kind of like, kind of a weird, like superficial kind of competitive atmosphere. You know, they're all tan and well-groomed and wearing real, tight shorts and stuff and you know I'm just kind of walking around like whatever and I, I find my spot and I, I'm walking past like uh, one of the machines and I, and I just kind of eavesdropped in the conversation a little bit and one of them was like I mean so I really just don't have to take that from him on the first date I mean really I don't even know you like who do you fuck do you think you are and the other one's like totally I mean that's just the worst and you totally get people who are, think they're so cool and they're not and, and I was like wait a minute and I would, Look at those guys, really strong guys. And, and then I look over at the water fountain, there's people kind of like splashing each other. <laughs> and I look over at like the, the squat machine, there's like two guys like squatting together. And then I look back at the guys next to me and they were kissing and I was like, I just signed up for the gay gym. Um, which is fine, which is fine. I mean, I, I, whatever. I mean, I, I'm from Vermont and Vermont is actually the first state in America to vote in uh, gay marriage, legalize gay marriage. And um, yeah, yeah, and I, I voted, I voted um, uh, for it. I voted for it, um, great thing. And so I was like, okay, no big deal. So I just find another machine, wherever's free, and uh, I get on these, I do these sit-ups. You know the sit-ups where like you sit on like an incline, and then, you know what I'm talking about? Like you sit up on, a, on an incline, it's an incline sit-up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's right. So it's like a little pyramid, right? So like I get on the one side of the pyramid and uh, I start doing my sit-ups. It's cool. And then, but then this other guy comes and he gets on the other side of the pyramid and, and starts doing his sit-ups. And I was like, whatever, that's okay. You know, it's, it's good balance. And uh, it's, 
so I'm doing my sit-ups, and I notice that when I sit up, he sits up, and we kind of make eye contact real briefly. Um, not a big deal, so I just, but I, I just go back down, come back up, like, oh, hey, how's it going? Like, back down, come back up, like, yeah, and, you know, just try it. Back down, come back up, it's like, hey, so what's, what's going on? And go back down, come back up, and then I try to, like, hold it to see if maybe, like, he was, I don't know what was going on, he would hold it, he'd be like, okay, go back down, come back up, I was like, all right, this is just weird, right? It's just weird. So I, I try to stagger my flow a little bit and try to like do that rocky thing, you know, where you like go down like that and come back up. When I come back up, he's kind of looking at me playfully like, yeah, what you got, boy? Come on. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. And I come back up again, and I'm just like, this is ridiculous. So I stop, and we make eye contact. We lock in eyes. And I just slowly start moving in a little bit and just <laughs> and we made out so we made out on the sit up machine and I'm just like whoo I get a kind of a rush so it's like I go to the shower so I go to the shower and I was like this is not me you know I'm usually very shy um, and so it's a whatever so I, I just I leave after that and I come back the next day and uh, I see him again on the sit-up machine with some other guy. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? And I go over to the machine, I march right over there, and I'm just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he looks up, he's like, wait, wait, what are you talking about? And I was just like, who the fuck is this? He's like, wait, what, this, this is R Ralphie. And I'm just like, wait, so you just do this every day then? And he's like, well, yeah. And I was like, slut. And it's, and then I went over to the fucking ass blaster and I was like, you piece of shit, you be sorry you left me. I'm gonna look so good tomorrow. Sorry you fucking fucked this up. Um, nah, whatever. <laughs> we never talked again. Um, uh, but yeah, so you know, it's, uh, there's things I miss about the gay gym though a little bit. You know, like you, you could always get a spotter uh, whenever you want. You know, just kind of sit up. And you get a spotter. And uh, it's not only that, but you get a spotter with a, a side of encouragement. You guys are looking at me like, what the fuck is a spotter? Do you know what a spotter is? It's just someone, like, if it's too heavy, they'll, like, pick it up for you. So if you're lifting something, it's too heavy, and you're like, ugh, they're like, okay, and they lift it for you. So you can always find a spotter. And uh, you, go, you, don't, you get a spotter with a side of encouragement. So it's not just a spotter. It's, uh, it's a spotter with a side of encouragement. So I was like, I remember I was like, I said this one guy, I was like, all right, I want to do 10. And he goes, okay. So, you know, I go, uh, nine. 10, and he goes, uh-uh, two more, bitch. And I was like, what? Holy shit. And it, 11, 12, and I get up, and I was like, wow, I didn't know I could do that. And he goes, good job. And send me on my way. I was like, all right, thanks. Um, so I miss that. I miss that, I do. Um, so then, obviously, I live in Berlin now. Berlin's great. Uh, you know, I do various jobs around here. Last thing I was doing was, like, making models and props for a movie, like, making, like, like puppets and shit for movies, like a horror movie. Um, and if anybody, if you guys work in film, like any of you guys work in film at all? No? Well, obviously you guys do, but um, the, uh, if you work in film in Germany, it's like, it's like the, the krasseste Denglish, it's like this mix of English and German, like, the, my boss would come over to me and he's like, yeah, also mit dieser Kreatur, es muss wirklich scary wirken, weißt du? Das ist, das ist kein, kein Puppet wirklich, das ist, das ist eigentlich, das, dieses Feeling muss rauskommen, weißt du? I'm just like, What fuck are you talking about, man? He's like, yeah, also, von vorne her ist es gut, aber jetzt geht's mehr, mehr um durability, weißt du? Also, wir crashen das Ding durch die Wand, weißt du? So, es muss wirklich so, muss stabil sein, aber es hast auch deine Freedom, weißt du? Es ist wirklich up to you. I just like, man, pick a fucking language, confusing the hell out of me, like, what am I gonna do? Um, but it's nice living in Berlin. I live in Neukölln. Um, I, I love all the street art around here and all the, like, random stickers and shit you see. You ever seen these stickers around here that say like, uh, fuck yoga, have you seen that? <laughs> no, anybody seen that? It's like, there's these stickers you walk around, it just says in, in bold black font, like, fuck yoga. And uh, I saw this and I saw, I saw it was hilarious and I, I sat down and I wanted to watch like what other people thought when they just walked by. And people would just walk by or laugh or a bit pissed off, but some people would walk by and they'd just, like start staring at it, like what the fuck? What is like you know? And I was thinking like, what the hell are they looking at? What are they looking for? And uh, it just I realized they were looking for like the date and the time. They're like, oh, fuck yoga. Where's that? <laughs> like I've never done fuck yoga before. I don't know. 
get involved. Um, all right, thanks for your time. Uh, my name is Sean. We'll see you guys later. Take oh my God. Sean's gym sounds amazing. <laughs> is it American Fitness on Hammondplatz? Because I've been going there for months and nothing, just sweaty people in the sauna. Um, that's all right. Are you guys having fun? Yes! That's so good to hear. That makes my life so uh, happy. Are you guys ready for your last comedian? Cool. Cool. Um, he actually was just at the Fringe Festival in Scotland, which is a really big deal for comedy. He's absolutely funny, and um, he has a sexy Scottish accent. Ow, ow! ow. You ready? Yes! Give a huge Noicom welcome for Chris Davies. Everyone is in the house. You all feeling good? You feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good. That's good. That's good. I need that. I need that energy so that I can give it back. That's how it works. Uh, small joke before I start. Uh, what do you call two Jews playing a guitar? A duet. <laughs> I know what you were thinking. I know what you were thinking. Oh, fuck, man, I've got an anti Semitic. No, no. Just innocent wordplay. I like it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm feeling good, man. I've got a lot of energy. I just want to get straight into the joke telling that cool with you. Uh, I'm a big fan of adverts. I love, I love uh, commercials, <laughs> as, the, as the Americans say. Uh, I, like, I like adverts, you know, and, um, well, I like this advert a lot, but it's not really, like, it's the, the style of it is not really done in Germany. It's, like, more done in, like, Britain and America and Canada and Australia and New Zealand. I don't know if you're aware of it, right, but it's one of these adverts that try and, like, get you to give them money to save an endangered species of animal. Go something like this. There are a mere 35 snow leopards left in the wild. <laughs> With your three pounds, you can sponsor and adopt one of these delightful creatures. <laughs> one thing wrong, the number 35. I'm sorry, is it just me? Or is it, I'm a bit confused that like, why is it the number 35 that that's when we start giving a shit about endangered species? <laughs> like there's 35 of them, man. Fuck it, throw them a party. <laughs> just let them, just let them deal with it, man. I'm all for saving them, man. Put on a disco ball, rock on, it'll be all good, man. <laughs> I'll basically want to know who's the guy in charge of the depleting number of snow leopards? <laughs> like seriously, man. Bill, come here. There's only 100 snow leopards left. I don't worry about it, man. Just give me a call when there's 35. We'll deal with it then, all right? <laughs> hey, what's that about, man? Th well, what are we going to do when there's only 35 of them? I don't know. We'll get someone to give us three pounds or something, man. It'll be fine. <laughs> I don't get it, man. Like, and, and it's funny because like, you're watching the advert, right? And the first, like, the first scene is like a picture of a big, sad snow leopard coming out of his cave. Snow and shit coming down. No friends, no food. Just a fucking horrible life, right? And then it cuts to another image of like Afghan poachers ripping the head off its bare shoulders. And you would think at that moment of seeing the advert, you'd be like, yeah, man, give me the phone, man. Give me my three pounds, man. Take my three pounds, it's fine. They actually have the audacity to try and sell you shit as well. So the, the, ad, the tone of the advert completely changes, right? It's like, there are a mere 35 snow leopards left in the wild. With your three pounds, you will receive information three times a year. You will receive a birthday card from your particular sponsored snow leopard. And you will receive a cuddly toy made out of real snow leopard fur. Yeah, man, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's crazy, man. And you, you know what they always say at the end of these things? They always say something really philosophical as well. They always like, try and make you feel even worse. They, they, they say something like, Imagine if the shoe was on the other foot. 
Imagine if the shoe was on the other foot. Essentially a metaphor for role reversal, right? Let's just imagine, if you will, for a second, a reverse role of this situation, all right? <laughs> snow leopards up there on the Afghan mountains watching snow leopard TV, an advert comes on. There are a mere 35 human beings left in the world. <laughs> With your undevoured carcass, you can help save these self-destructive creatures. Listen, man. See, when there's 35 of us left in the world, right? A half-eaten antelope is about as useful to us as three pounds is to a fucking snow leopard. <laughs> what the hell did they expect, man? Three pounds for a snow leopard? All the snow leopards up there in the Afghan mountains sitting there. Right, lads, it's the first Thursday of the month. <laughs> Let's head to the job center, pick up our benefits. <laughs> like, seriously, man, what do they expect, man? You know, like, to, for that snow leopards to go to the local Spatekauf, man, buy a big bag of African-style chips and rent Titanic for the night. <laughs> Weep away at their own existence. That was the big closer for that joke there. <laughs> I don't really know what you're expecting, man. I had uh, snow leopards watching TV, eating African-style chips, renting Titanic, weeping at their own existence. I found it incredibly funny. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm only teasing. You're all, you're all good, man. You're all good. Uh, was drinking on my own the other night. <laughs> no, I love it, man. It's great. So I work at a couple of bars, and if I've got the night off, I'll go down and have a few drinks. And, uh, you're, like, the guy, I don't know if you get, like, surely you all go out drinking and stuff. But um, you ever notice the guy that sells the roses? <laughs> you know this guy that walks about selling the roses? He just kind of walks into a place, and it's like a ray of sunshine. <laughs> I was sitting there, sitting there, like, just, like, chilling out, drinking and stuff, and this guy, like, walks in. He's the happiest guy in the world ever. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, this guy is fucking happy. Like, all these guys that sell the roses are, man, I think I know why. All these guys, I've got like a PhD in behavioral science. <laughs> oh, seriously, man. Those guys can pinpoint a new couple from about a kilometer away. <laughs> Just walks to the place, right? So anyway, this guy comes in, right, and he's all happy and shit. And there's a, there's a new couple that are sitting in the corner, right? And they are a new couple, you can just totally tell. All right, but, but this is like the third date or something. Put it this way, you know, he has not yet been lost in paradise. It's, it's just kind of kind of one of those things, right? He's still trying to, there's, there's, he's still trying to get his claws in there, you know? But they're, they're, they're nice, they're, they're having a little chat. The Rosie's guy, he spots this, and he does like, Every single, like, he does the exact same material, the exact same thing he does to every single table. He just always comes and goes, my friend, beautiful lady, huh? Rose, beautiful lady, huh? Come on, beautiful lady, huh? Rose. Now, you can tell, I can tell that she's kind of sitting there thinking, oh, my God, how embarrassing this guy's trying to tell, try to sell me roses, but it would be nice to get a rose, actually. <laughs> you can tell he's sitting there thinking, I wonder if I buy her a rose, she'll let me have sex with her. <laughs> How much? Five euro. Five euro, my friend. Five euro. So cheap. Five euro. I can tell at this point she's like, he better think my love is worth more than five euros, by the way. <laughs> and he's sitting there thinking, her vagina better be worth five euros. <laughs> so, he buys a, so he buys a rose, and, uh, and the rosiest guy continues uh, his journey through the bar. And he goes to every single person and offers them a rose. Except me. Exactly. Let me tell you something, man. There's nothing worse than being alone, drunk, and not even the guy that sells the roses will talk to you. <laughs> Just walks right by you. You're like, what the fuck? So he was leaving, and I looked at him, like, I kind of glanced at his eye, and I caught him, and he caught mine, and he was like, Rose? <laughs> I was like, man, what the fuck makes you so happy? That's ridiculous. What makes you so happy, man? He's like, Roses. Are you trying to tell me, man, that all that shit, you fucking, all your positivity in life, all your good energy just comes from you selling roses? He's like, yes. <laughs> I was like, all right, give me one of those fucking roses, man. Give me a rose. I'm not giving you five euros for it, man. I'll give you one euro, all right? So I took a, I took, took a rose off him. And lo and behold, I was sitting at the bar, happy as Larry. I was like, 
then after like four seconds, that happiness faded into nothingness. <laughs> and I was like, listen, man, that was all very nice and all, you know, but it never lasted very long. What's that all about? He's like, my friend, one rose is one moment of happiness. <laughs> but many roses, huh? Many moments of happiness, huh? The bastard was trying to shark me, man. He was trying to fucking goad me into buying some shit. I was like, all right, man, give me all your rosies. Here's 20 euros. See you later, man. <laughs> Literally sitting on the bar. <laughs> He's so happy, man. I was fucking ecstatic. And then, like, you know, 30 seconds later, I was saddled in a bastard. <laughs> so I'd done what any person would do in that situation. Go around Kreuzberg and sell those rosies. But to be honest, I wasn't as experienced as he was, you know. I didn't have his PhD behavioral science shit, so it was essentially, I was essentially just a fucking Scottish guy going up to people going, here, moan, here, moan. Bonnie lassie, bonnie lassie, moan. Listen, man, I was so inexperienced that I even up to a group of 12 guys, here, moan, here, moan. They didn't even think I was selling the roses, man. They just thought I was trying to seduce them, here. Moan. They thought I was the most determined prostitute in the world ever, man. Here, five euro. Moan. Huh? Five euro. Moan. Huh? No, but the worst part about it was, man, each one of those sitting at that desk, man, were all fucking Scottish and they could understand everything I was saying. <laughs> you know what's even worse? They actually deliberated for a couple of minutes. Is his ass worth five euros, man? I don't know. Should we fucking sit? Is that fucking? Until they realised it was going to be forty-five pence a head, and went, "Fuck that, man! Too expensive." <laughs> all right, guys. Um, you've been a fucking wonderful audience all night, man. You've uh, laughed at some amazing uh, comics. It's hard to laugh that long. It sucks a lot of energy out of you, man. I appreciate you being so lovely. Thank you very much. My name's Chris Davis. Cheers. <laughs> Give a huge round of applause for one of her bar staff from Mixa Cafe here on Lena Strasse. Valdemar, get on up here. Valdemar, everybody. Our friendly neighbor from the north. And then we have Sean Hunter Williams. Yes. Last but not least, Chris Davies. Thank you so much. Give a hug for your main man this evening, Nate Butcher! You guys, have a good night. Get home safe. <laughs>